Hello there guys and welcome, it is Niran here and today it is time for you to welcome you to yet another episode of our Wigan Athletic Road to Glory episode number 10 in fact today and today we've got another amazing episode because we are of course in the transfer window, last time out you guys gave me some, uh, some choices in terms of players to buy, if you could do that again that would be massively appreciated in terms of of uh, because next time we'll be looking at centre halves and also players to buy on pre contract agreements. Today, though, we're looking at backup strikers and a fullback. And in terms of a striker, it doesn't really seem as if we need one, technically, because as you can see in terms of the top scorers list, the top two players on that are Wigan players. Will Grigg with 16 goals and Mikel Duland with 11. When it comes to the assist list, we've also got some representatives there in the top 15 as well. Michael Jacobs in fifth with six uh, assists and Vucic there as well with five. And uh, I think Will Grigg was further down that list as well. Perkins was actually further down as well. And in terms of clean sheets, Jasker Lyon has the joint most in the league, along with South End goalkeeper Bentley. And he's quite a young goalkeeper. He might be someone that we look out for uh, in future seasons. Uh, nevertheless, we're going to go straight into the first game of today's episode. We'll see some transfer activity next time. Um, and in terms of um, today's first game, we're away against Port Vale in the league. And we are in fantastic goal scoring form at the moment. We are the highest goal scorers in the league. Can we continue that run going into? this game away from home against mid-table side Port Vale really it has to be said they're not really top they're not really bottom they're just sitting there in mid-table and they actually took the lead in the sixth minute thanks to Hooper but Bartos Kapuska our main man our Polish midfield maestro actually equalized just five minutes later to make sure that it was potentially uh, equal at half time and it was but Kapuska actually scored just after the break and then got a straight red card so hero to zero we did still make it a two goal lead thanks to Yannick Vilcher Moore made sure it was a uh, nervy last 17 minutes uh, by getting a second for Port Vale but the game does in the end end 3-2 to the visitors aka us so it's a good start to the episode in terms of results now we've got to make sure it's a good episode in terms of transfers and we continue our fantastic form in the league but Kapuska will be suspended for the next game uh, as you could as you uh, may know from last episode we uh, asked the board for some additional funds we asked for two million pounds and they've come back and said they're willing to give us 720k which is decent you know it's something it's something at the end of the day and we're going to go ahead and use that to buy some players first of all we're looking at strike uh, we looked at Kemar Roof and Aldo Kalulu last time. You guys also suggested Nicky Iose from Swindon and also Dimitri Oberlin from Red Bull Salzburg. So we're going to go ahead and make a bid for Oberlin. Uh, they wanted 550k, but we're going to offer them 400k. And uh, Swindon were not so sure about selling Nicky Iose. They, um, they said he'd recently joined the club, but we're going to go ahead and make a bid for him uh, nevertheless. So you can see that we are going to go ahead and do that. The Swindon Town striker who's doing very well in real life. He scored quite a few goals in real life. He's in good form as well in this game as well. He's obviously in the same league as us. He plays in League One too, so we can tell whether he's in good form or not. Um, and he's in pretty decent form. We're offering 400k for him. And as I alluded to at the start of the episode, we're also looking at fullbacks, but only on loan. We don't have enough money to buy a right back uh, because we've got Borthwick Jackson, who's a left back, but he, he can't really play on the right. And then apart from that, we've only got James Bree. We're going to train J uh, James Bree to make sure that he's championship quality for next season. Um, so we only need a right back really from now until the end of the season. We're looking at Musa Mohamed from a Turkish side. He's 67 overall and 19 years of age. And we're looking at Andre Ibsen Roma from FC Midyatland, who of course used to be teammates with Mikel Duland, one of the players we've already signed in this career mode save. And uh, just making a one-year loan length uh, bid. We can always send him back. We probably should have made a three-month bid in the end. Uh, those, Both of those loan bids were actually accepted for Andre Ibsen Roma of, um, of FC Midyatland and also Musa Mohamed of Medipol Bashak Shehir. I don't know if I pronounced that right, but he plays in the Turkish League. Both of them with fairly low wages. Uh, 5k for Musa Mohamed, 4k for Andre Ibsen Roma. We actually went for Musa Mohamed in the end. He's a Nigerian right back and you'll see his stats in a moment. He is better than all the right backs we have at the moment. Uh, he's about, he's just a little bit uh, worse than Borthwick Jackson, but he's actually a natural right back and he's fairly attacking as well. And he's pretty unknown. You can see his stats here. He's 67 overall, 19 years of age. Would have been a good prospect to sign, but unfortunately, Unfortunately, we, we couldn't really afford to buy a right back as well. Plus, having bought James Bree, we don't particularly need to. You can see he's got some fairly solid defensive stats. Good dribbling, free kick accuracy, curve, and also speed and agility as well. So he'll be quite a good uh, player to use 
and uh, he'll be making his debut in this episode. Only a loan signing, that's why I didn't really ask for you guys' permission, but um, hopefully he does well for the squad, and he's a fairly unknown player. Uh, Swindon actually rejected our bid for Nicky Iose, saying they wanted 450k, so we went ahead and matched that. Um, and as you can see, Leon from last episode, as I mentioned earlier, we uh, had a look at Kemar Roof from Oxford and Aldo Kalulu from Leon. Leon is just straight up being completely unreasonable about Kalulu's uh, worth, so we're probably not going to go ahead and uh, further bid for him. However, uh, Oxford United have accepted our bid for Kemar Roof, which involves one of our unused strikers in the deal. We're now going to go ahead and uh, make some contract offers for some of these players, including Dimitri Oberlin, uh, Red Bull Salzburg accepted the 400k bid straight off the bat for the 61 overall 18 year old. So we're offering him 1,450 per week in terms of wages. Here you can see Kemar Roof, the Oxford United player, 66 overall, 23 years of age. He scored 20 plus goals in League Two in real life. He's a real prospect player in terms of you know potentially playing in higher leagues next season, maybe a future Jamie Vardy. Um, but uh, we're going to go ahead and make a bid for him in terms of contract. Yeah, he wants a substantial pay rise, actually, 7k a week. And also we're offering £4,550 per week for Nikki Iose. And at the end of the episode, I will ask you guys to choose between uh, those three strikers. Nevertheless, it is now time to get into the second game of today's episode and the first played game of the episode. And we are a at home, sorry, not away from home. We're at home for this one. And it is yet another league game, this time at home against Scunthorpe. There you can see the squad in the background. Not too many changes. Musa Mohamed, though, makes his debut. Uh, Daniels and Pierce are our centre-halves, Vucic is in for Vilchut and also Emir Hughes is in for the suspended uh, Kapuska with Michael Jacobs also starting this one as well. We got the first chance of the game though, it was saved spectacularly though by, um, I don't know, I don't know what I just said, spectacularly though by the Scunthorpe goalkeeper from Mikel Doolan's effort. They went forward though a few minutes later, it's quite an end-to-end -end game, Doolan then swinging the ball in towards Vucic, it's not a down towards Emir Hughes who tries to hit it on the turn but unfortunately is unable to convert the chance. He fairly... Um, controversial midfielder amongst Wigan fans. As you can see, Scunthorpe getting the ball back again there after a failed clearance from J uh, Jason Pierce, but it's a good save from our goalkeeper, Jus Jaskalainen. And in a pretty action-packed first half, we're going forward again. It's been very end-to-end, -end, but Michael Jacobs has found Emmy Hughes, and we have got the first goal of the game. It's set up in the first instance by Will Grigg, but it is another assist by our top assist maker, Michael Jacobs. Uh, to find his midfield partner, Emir Hughes, who manages to just scoop the ball from under his feet and past the Scunthorpe goalkeeper, but a harsh challenge going in by Will Grigg. Unfortunately, the Scunthorpe player turned at the last minute, and it is a straight red card. I cannot argue. It is completely my fault, not Will Grigg's, but we are down to 10 men, and our star man is, uh, is sent off and is out of a crucial game against Manchester City in the semi-finals of the Capital One Cup. So we've got to struggle now and try and win this game, but we may have been gifted a victory here uh, by the fact that Scunthorpe have given away a penalty with five minutes to go. Marcus Rashford, is he potentially on the pitch? I'm not entirely sure. Someone's going to take it, though. But obviously, Will Grigg getting sent off is, is massive for us. And unfortunately, the Scunthorpe player, as I said, he just turned at the last minute and I'd already pressed X and it was just a disaster. But uh, Marcus Rashford is on. He is the striker now and he's going to have to play against Manchester City. He's going to try and convert this penalty though to double our lead and he does so and makes it 2-0 to, to, to put the game sorry, beyond any sort of doubt despite us being down to 10 men and with just three minutes of the game to go, Marcus Rashford on loan from Manchester United. The 61 overall striker has blasted home a penalty to ensure we win the game in the league against Scunthorpe 2-0. So two more wins in the league in today's episode. Now we've got to try and do the unthinkable and beat Manchester City in the Capital One Cup later on. There you can see confirmation of the red card. That's the formation we changed to as well after that red card. Michael Jacobs, though, getting man of the match after the assist for the first goal. He was very, very solid indeed. Now we focused a lot on players going in or coming into the club uh, since the start of this transfer window, but now we're going to focus on players going out. First of all, Lee Nichols. He's a very solid goalkeeper and I was wanting him to be my first choice goalkeeper next season, but he's already expressed that he wants to leave the club. Uh, so we've had to put him on the transfer list and Leeds United have come in, uh, the championship side, with a 525,000 bid, which is 100k below his valuation. Uh, we counter offered for 650, they then came back uh, with 600k, so we're now going to meet them in the middle with 625k, and they in the end do go ahead and accept that, so Lee Nichols is on the way out of the club, which means it's even more imperative 
uh, that we uh, train up our current youth goalkeeper, Dino Zetterberg. So at least we have a backup goalkeeper. I'm not going to say that he's going to be our first choice goalkeeper next season. We're still going to need to buy a goalkeeper at the start of season two. But Dino Zetterberg at least will then be a backup goalkeeper to sort of basically be the Lee Nichols of the squad now. Now we're currently training the young Swedish goalkeeper as well as his, as well as his Swedish youth academy counterpart, Philip Volden. Although I think we promoted him last episode. He's on the way to 59. Zetterberg is up to 56. And the other player that we're training at the moment is James Bree, who's on the way to 64 now. Now, my aim for him is to have him at 68 overall for the start of next season. Then he's, you know, he's first team quality. He's a championship first team quality right back. And it means we don't have to buy another right back next season. It means that Musa Mohamed can go back from his loan back to Turkey and we'll have an immediate replacement uh, via training of James Bree. But now moving into the final game of today's episode, away from home at the Etihad against Manchester City. The Manchester City fans will be baying for blood and they'll be hoping that their star men, the likes of Aguero, Hart, Silva, Yaya Torre, will be able to do that at the Etihad. They're walking out onto the pitch now and uh, we've got a massive task on. But of course, we've beaten Liverpool, we've beaten Manchester United and we've beaten Southampton on the way to getting here. So Manchester City cannot afford to underestimate their current opposition. However, we are playing a slightly weakened side. Grigg is, of course, suspended. So Rashford is in for him. Uh, there's fatigue for Jacobs and for uh, for Morsey as well, which means Perkins and Sutar are in. We've also got Conor McElhenney starting this one. But as you can see, we got the first chance of the game. But a wonderful double save there from Willy Caballero. Kapuska, of course, is back in the side after his suspension. He forced the first save from the Argentinian. And then John Sutar running in forced the second save. Yaya Torre had a strike early on as well, which was saved by Yusi Askelainen. But we are now going forward through Marcus Rashford, who's one on one, but it's a good save once again from Willy Caballero, replacing Joe Hart in the squad. We're going forward again, though. Perkins has found Rashford again, but Rashford this time cannot even hit the target. It does just show perhaps we do need a better backup striker because at the moment uh, Rashford is unable to finish his dinner, but neither is John Sutar. A wonderful save again from Caballero to deny the Scottish defensive midfielder in the second half. Now City are going forward with Fernandinho. He's not offside and he misses in the end and he probably should have done a lot better. Maybe the um, the pressure from uh, James Bree in the end but he puts the shot wide. Now Aubameyang is running through on goal but again it's a good save from Jaskalainen. Clearly he signed from Borussia Dortmund but he is denied by our Finnish goalkeeper and in the end it is nil-nil. Pretty boring and dull game in all honesty in terms of goals. There were a few chances for either side uh, mainly in the first half for us anyway. Uh, nothing major in the second half. I did end up having to bring off Rashford because I just wasn't confident in his finishing ability towards the end. Jaskalainen with, uh, with man of the match. Good rate as well for Kapuska, also for Conor McElhenney, been very impressed with him since he started coming into the side, he played well, he might play in our next game actually that we play, because uh, he impressed me more than Dooland uh, in terms of played games, but we'll make sure that we keep playing Dooland in Sims, because he is very good indeed, as you can see there is our lead at the top of the table, on 62 points from Barnsley actually, interestingly in second, the team we bought James Bree from, our current right back, and uh, we are what, 16 points clear of second place at the moment, so not only are we looking an absolute shoe in at the midway point of the season for promotion we're also looking basically nailed on to actually win league one itself but now moving on to more transfer activity and as you can see deals have been sewn up for all the strikers that we are looking at firstly kemar roof 750k plus craig davies who's an un unused 65 overall fairly old striker uh, we're offering him in the deal as well and 7k a week for him, he's basically the top scorer in the division below in League 2, so I suppose a fairly realistic player to sign, especially if we're moving into the championship next season. I suppose another realistic signing is Nicky Iose, who's doing better in real life, not so great on this game, but he's still a pretty good signing. 450k, of course, cheaper than Kemar Roof. 4,550 in terms of wages. And then the outsider, I suppose you could say, Dimitri Oberlin of Red Bull Salzburg. 61 overall. Probably the best in terms of potential, but the worst in terms of current overall. And we're sort of looking for players, really, that have good uh, current overall. But uh, the SoFIFA profiles of all these players will be in the description. So use that to, um, to base your decision on. Uh, personally, if it was my choice, I would choose Kemar Roof. 
because I think that's the most realistic signing, followed by Nicky Iose. But if you want me to sign Dimitri Oblin, then go ahead and vote for him. Uh, a straw poll in the description will decide which striker I buy for next episode, and I'll do a similar thing for centre-halves next episode, because we, of course, need to replace Barnett. Nevertheless, I hope you've enjoyed today's episode of Wigan Athletic Career Mode. If you did, feel free to hit the likes button, subscribe if you're new around here as well, and comment about enjoying the video if you enjoyed it that much. It's been a pleasure ranting at you guys today. Have a good day, enjoy yourselves, and goodbye. Nah, that's not me. Act like a waste man, that's not me. Sex in the girl, nah, that's not me. Lips in the girl, nah, that's not me. Yeah, I used to wear Gucci, I put it all